when you hit a very big target in your business or your life, what is the very first thing that you do? Or let's look at this from an entrepreneur standpoint. When a big target is hit in most businesses, what is the very first thing that employees want to do? They want to celebrate or they want to reward themselves with a time off. But when momentum begins, either in your business or in your personal life, it is not the time to celebrate and sit on your laurels. When momentum begins, that's the time to push the gas pedal and just literally go faster. Most companies, no matter what size, slow down and they relax when momentum begins. And that's why growth only comes in spurts for them. They grow and then they celebrate. And while they're celebrating, somebody else overtakes them. And now they need a new growth spurt. And if they're really good at what they do, they'll find one and they'll grow again. But after they feel comfortable, they'll celebrate and they'll lose momentum again. Right off the top of my head, I could think of, I don't know, three giant companies that went bankrupt just recently because of this. And it's not the size of the company because companies are run by individuals. And it's the individuals in the company that we need to really keep moving forward. And as we find people that we cannot keep moving forward during times of momentum, we immediately know who cannot be part of our team if we wanna to grow to the next level. So here's the guidelines behind all this. Every time you get momentum in business, you need to focus on sales, systems, people, and profits. In that order, every growth spurt of sales must be backed by at least some basic systems, meaning we grow and then we build systems that support that growth and we keep growing. The systems are pillars that support our growth so that we can handle more growth. And once a system is put in place, it's handed off to a person on our team or to a department inside of our organization who takes ownership of that system. I did a video a while back detailing capacity versus capabilities. And if you haven't seen that, you should watch it because I show you exactly how to balance your capacity, which is the amount of sales you have and your capabilities, which is your team or your systems or your technology, your capabilities are your ability to effectively handle the sales and support your growth. Now, most companies or even most people hit plateaus because after each win, instead of building systems that support their new level of growth, they take a break because they work so hard and now they deserve time off. And the same is true in your personal relationships. When you find something that works great to bring you and your partner closer, you need to find ways to work that into your life all the time so that it keeps you close. So if your partner loves dancing and they feel closer to you when they dance with you, even if you hate dancing, if you find a way to dance with them once a week or once a month and you enjoy it, they're gonna love you more for it. But what most people do in a relationship is they take their spouse out dancing once and then they make sure that everybody knows how much they hate being there. And then they think that just because maybe they checked that off their list one time, every time the subject comes up, they can remind everybody how they once took them out dancing. No, man, that fucking sucks. Find out what works and do more of it. Find paths to grow, then press the gas and go all in when everybody else is getting sloppy because growing anything in life is all about momentum. And when you understand that momentum is not the end goal, it's a starting point. It's a time to buckle down. It's a time to focus. It's a time to push even harder. When you do that, the real growth, the consistent ongoing growth, and the fun really begins. And you might fight me on this, and you might say, heck, my team works their ass off. They deserve a break so they could come back and work even harder. That's fair. You could think that. I'm a firm believer in rewarding myself and my teams when we hit big targets, but leaders always want more growth. And when you allow people to keep winning because they keep growing the company, then what you'll find is that your people are far more driven, both now and in the future, to keep coming up with new ways to grow. So we always need to be looking for ways to reward our teams and ourselves in ways that drive more growth and that keeps the momentum in hyperdrive. Now, a while back, we had a tailor come into our office and make custom shirts for everybody. That's something that most of them don't or can't do for themselves, but it's a big reward, and they loved it, and they felt more confident wearing those shirts, and that confidence definitely had a positive impact on our numbers. A little bit before that, we rewarded people with stand-up desks and ergonomic chairs and custom design office spaces, which everyone loved because they got to personalize their space, and it made every one of them more healthy and more productive. Nobody needed an extra vacation or downtime after they hit their targets. And the rewards that they got, they see every single day and they're reminded of that big win every single day and they're stronger because of it. What kind of cool rewards have you given out? Do me a favor and if you have great ways to reward your team or ways that you like to be rewarded that don't take away from work but actually add to your growth, 
then tell me in the comments below because I really want to know and I want everybody else to see what you're doing. But listen, we all want businesses that are built to grow. I mean, I've been blessed several times over with companies that have grown larger in just a few years than most companies grow in a lifetime, but knowing how to do that did not come overnight and it didn't come without a lot of trial and error. It came because I'm in the trenches every single day myself, you know, growing companies and pushing through obstacles and at every single growth spurt, I systematize what works so that we never have to learn those lessons over and over and over again. And so I can reproduce that growth in each one of my other companies. And that's why I love sharing with you these subtle ways, things that usually take less time that you're spending right now that you can grow more predictably, more consistently, and with less frustration today because your business and your company and your organization is actually built to grow. So if you're having trouble scaling past the million dollar mark or the $10 million mark or the $100 million mark, go and take the Built to Grow review. It's free and it helps leaders just like you to see what parts of their business might be breaking before it actually hurts your momentum. It's builttogrowreview.com. I'll put a link in the description, but it's builttogrowreview.com and it's free and the insight that you get could be what changes the game for you this quarter or even this whole year. Also, subscribe now and tell me in the comments the best rewards that you use inside of your companies. I look forward to seeing your comments.